Hi class, so today I want to discuss skeletal system. So let's use this fancy schmancy program. Um, so the skeletal system. So we can break down the skeletal system into two divisions. So one division is um, appendicular skeleton, right? So everything that is highlighted belongs to appendicular skeleton. So the upper limbs, the lower limbs with the hip bones right here and the upper limbs with the scapula and with the clavicle so this is the appendicular skeleton so the appendicular skeleton is attached to a axial skeleton so here's the axial skeleton so everything that is highlighted belongs to axial skeleton is the skull thorax or the thoracic cage and the vertebral column. So the vertebral column also includes sacrum and coccyx. So now let's start going um, kind of one by one. <coughs> so the one that is highlighted is a frontal bone. Then two on the left side and on the right side are the parietal bones. One in the back or posterior view is the occipital bone and also two on the sides temporal and temporal so there are eight cranial bones one frontal two parietals and two temporal one occipital so it's six let's find the seven which is the ethmoid bone it's a nasal bone it's right there so you can see it from this nasal cavity that's the ethmoid bone if i will isolate it it looks like it's a cockroach right so that's an ethmoid bone so this little dance or this little notch is called the crista galley this is a thick triangular projection or the process along the midline and the superior aspect of the ethmoid bone so this provides the surface for the attachment uh, for the thallus cerebri right for the inferior part of the brain there's another bone it's called sphenoid bone so it's basically if this is a temporal bone right next to it is a sphenoid bone if i will isolate sphenoid bone looks like a bat looks like a pterodactyl so this bone is also a cranial bone and this is like a foundation or like supports the other plates of the cranium so you can say that this side right so if we'll go back fade others you see this the orbitals the space the cavities so this also provides like a back wall for our ocular organs and you can see how other bones articulate with a sphenoid bone, like temporal bone, parietal bone, and this is a frontal bone. So this is like a foundation. So now are highlighted only cranial bones. So I'm gonna explode the cranial bones. So these are the eight cranial bones. Frontal, occipital, two parietals, two temporals, ethmoid bone, nasal bone, and this one looks like a pterodactyl, so this is a sphenoid bone. This little holes right here is like foramen, and this fissures, right, this little cracks, and other foramens, the holes in that bone, they provide for the anterior blood vessels, and in particular for optic nerve, for the ocular organs. So there are 14 facial bones, so the one is the mandible, so the mandible is the jaw, and the jaw articulates with the temporal bone. So the mandible has a lot of important landmarks, or the surfaces. Here's the angle right here of the mandible. So why is it important? Because um, from archaeological point of view, or from forensic psychologist point of view, so when you look at the angle of the mandible, we can kind of predict uh, if that belongs to a man or to a woman. 
So if there's a more sharp angle, right, like that, then most likely it's men. When it's more shallow angle, right, so most likely it's, it belongs to a woman. Uh, obviously, there are some exceptions. So this is a foramen, right, right here. This is the external surface of the body mandible. But here's the foramen. This is for the entry of the blood vessels or the nerves. So this part that is highlighted is called ramus of the mandible. So this part is called mandibular notch. This part is called condylar process of the mandible. So this process articulates with temporal bone, temporal mandibular uh, joint. This is called the coronoid process. Um, the one part that I didn't explain, so this little hole right right here or the foramen that you see in the temporal bone is called this part it's called acoustic meatus so the acoustic meatus this is the internal auditory canal right here in the ear so this little thing that's sticking out is called styloid process one of the muscles are attached to it and this area is called mastoid process also important that's where the sternocleidomastoid muscles are, are attached to I'm only pointing out on very important landmarks so the other two facial bones are the maxilla left and maxilla right so for example if I want to isolate it right so here is the heart palate right there so this is the roof of the mouth so the heart palate ass ossifies or calcifies within the age of 12, 13, 14, it depends. So there's also foramens here. So these are the foramens for passage for the nerves, blood vessels. So this bone is warmer. So it's located right along the line between the right and left uh, nasal cavities. It is classified as a flat bone and contributes to the formation um, of the bony nasal septum because this bone right so we already discussed this this is the ethmoid bone so right here on top these two bones are nasal bones they're also classified as the flat bones they contribute to the formation of the bridge of the nose so this is the roof of the nasal cavity this bone is called lacrimal bone right so it's like two of them on both sides so they classify it as regular bones uh, and they contribute to the formation of visceral cranium so and if we're gonna look at the orbital cavities right you see just bunch of bones sitting right next to uh, one another and they articulate and these are the like these lines that you see these are the sutures so the other imp two important facial bones are zygomatic bones like the cheekbones on the left side and on the right side. So the zygomatic bone so it articulates with a uh, temporal bone. So, and you see that orbital cavities are basically just bunch of bones that articulate one with another. So zygomatic bone, then the maxilla, that also provides the floor for the ocular devices. Then this uh, lacrimal bone, then the ethmoid bone, and the sphenoid bone and then the actual frontal bone so the orbital cavities include frontal bone if you go from superior then to inferior uh, then the maxilla then the posterior is the sphenoid bone then on the lateral side you find the zygomatic bone and closer to the midline there's ethmoid bone and the lacrimal bone so and the other two facial bones that we did not really discuss um, they're called palatine bones so you see if we're looking through this nasal cavity going looking posteriorly so there's palatine on one side and palatine on another side so they also create a base or the foundation or the roof of the mouth so you see this maxilla and then there's a palatine so if we if i will highlight both of them and i will isolate them and then i will look inferiorly so this one is the palatine bone and this one is the maxilla so it's like that 
and here's a huge cavity within the maxilla so it's called sinuses so another important landmark in the occipital bone is this huge hole it's called magnum foramen foramen or foramen it's a hole so the usual foramens are pretty small but this one is huge so the reason for that is just because the spinal cord or the midbrain right so the midbrain from the brain will pass through so I just added the brain and the nervous system so I just highlighted half of that so here are the pons midbrain and the medullary uh, center so it's basically passes through this magnum foramen and this is a spinal cord maybe not that important for our class but this tooth is the central incisor this one is also incisor so there's a two incisors then there's a canine and then premolar another premolar and then molar molar and molar so it's like three molars two premolars one canine and two incisors so this eight on one side eight and eight sixteen sixteen plus sixteen thirty two so these are all of the bones of the skull so the eight cranial bones and 14 facial bones so in the next video we're gonna discuss the vertebral column and the thoracic cage